Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. You see that golden pony behind me that's letting you know that we are entering Kentucky. Now, there's something that I tried to do one time before. It was during COVID, and when we showed up, they said, hey, sorry, it's closed. <laughs> the moose should have told you out front, basically, yeah. So, it was Colonel Sanders' house and museum. <laughs> it's open again. We're gonna go, it's on our way to Louisville, I think. Yes, Louisville. And uh, they apparently have an animatronic Colonel Sanders there. I've gotta see. This should be a blast. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all. It begins right now. People are probably screaming right now. They're like, it's pronounced Louisville, Louisville. Yep, sorry about that. That big house on the hill is it. That is the Colonel's place and the site of the museum. There it says Restaurant Support Center. When I say I'm excited to be here, I really mean I'm excited because like I said, when I came before, it was during like 2020, the pandemic, and a security guard actually came out and said, um, it's closed temporarily, but it looks like it'll probably end up being permanently. I said, no way. He said, yeah, I think so. And then I thought I saw like a year ago that this house was put up for sale. But look at this. A bust of Colonel Sanders. Guy is a true rags to riches story if there ever was one. Says a man will rust out quicker than he will wear out. A legend in his own time. <laughs> the face of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel Sanders was just amazing because, you know, his father died when he was six. So he had to take care of his brother and sister, the younger ones and was basically the head of the household. He experimented with the cooking. He had to, he didn't really get any kind of formal education and he had to go to work early. He would be a fireman on the railroad. He, he got in a lot of fights. <laughs> he also worked as an insurance salesman, a farmer. But yeah, he always lost his job because he, uh, he didn't take any guff from anyone and he always worked hard. And if anybody didn't work hard, he let them know that he thought they were a slacker and didn't have any problem coming to fisticuffs over it. He got married when he was 18 to a girl that basically he knew his whole life that he was in love with named Josephine and they had a baby, but he couldn't keep a job and was always getting into fights, like a lot of fist fights with people. And she got tired of it and left him and stuck with him for a while, but I mean, just wouldn't stay, like she was estranged from him and Eventually, he ended up, when he was 40 years old, opening his first gas station, which is basically where the whole chicken franchise and his story starts. Yeah, he started a gas station, and to supplement a little bit of the income, he made some fried chicken. And his recipe, 11 herbs and spices, was pretty popular with people and became known for that. So he had a stretch on the Dixie Highway that was kind of popular and he had, he was selling a lot of gas there, but had to supplement that income because there was a, you know, a um, gas rationing at some points and he would have other gas stations open up that would try and become competition. So he thought he had something good going. He really thought he was gonna live off this. And then when he was about 65, they rerouted the freeway and built like a new, passway for passengers and they quit taking the Dixie Highway and he started losing a lot of business. So he went on the road and tried to sell his chicken and franchise it to people. And that's what really his story was. He, he took off and for years and years he would talk people into buying franchises with his standards and everything and ended up getting 600 franchises before he sold it when he was like 72. He ended up selling it for $2 million and then became the face of the company, traveling around and making appearances. And, you know, they used his face literally as the mascot of Kentucky Fried Chicken. And then when it was sold by the people that bought it from him, it was actually sold for like $280 million. And he just, he, he was beside himself. He couldn't believe it. He was, uh, he was shocked. But he said, you know, when I sold it for $2 million, I, I thought to myself then, what in the world can me and my family not buy for $2 million? So, you know, it was kind of like, that is a bummer that 
somebody else made $280 million off my invention, but that's all right. <laughs> he would eventually hate it though, because towards the end of his life, it had been sold and they changed the recipes and everything. He'd go in there and just raise hell. He would go in the kitchen and complain about the cleanliness of the place. He would say that the food tastes like slop. He would throw his food on the ground and everything. He was a real pistol. But beloved by his community, man, for sure. Let's go in and see this place. I heard the museum part is not huge, but I did hear about an animatronic, and that is worth it. Wonder if the Colonel would ever greet you from there. He was a spitfire. He loved to cuss and loved to fight. Any chance he got. Here it is. Got a nice holiday display already. Beautiful tree. Now he started in Corbin, Kentucky, so there's also a museum there where his Sanders chicken house was. Wow. Well, my name is Colonel Harlan Sanders, and this museum is all about my life. Yeah. I was born in Henryville, Indiana, not too far from here. When I was 10, I learned an important lesson about hard work. Truth be told, it was a tongue lashing from my mother I shall never forget. I made a resolution then that I would never let anything interfere with me doing the best job as possible. And that lesson is probably why Kentucky Fried Chicken came to be. So come on in, make yourself at home. Over there to your right is where it all begins. So over here is pictures of him as a baby and the family members and speaking of babies that's partially how he became a colonel he was a midwife <laughs> when he was running the sanders chicken joint he also supplemented his income as a midwife and would deliver babies around the county so because of his famous chicken and that they gave him the highest honor in kentucky there's margaret sanders his mother there's a cleaned up harlan 1914 and there he is working on the railroad now here's the service station the first service station he opened apparently that was a really bad stretch it was like called hell's half acre and there was like prohibition during that time so there was a lot of people running illegal booze through there and that's what it looked like when he first started just either side of the road he apparently had somebody open a gas station as um, competition and the guy started painting over the colonel's billboards so the colonel um, basically went and killed him <laughs> went and shot him somehow got away with it or at least that's the story I heard there he is receiving his Kentucky Colonel accommodation in 1964 crazy that's so cool man what a character he even uh he even tried to kidnap his own daughter he said in his book because uh his wife josephine wouldn't you know had moved out and didn't want him to uh to see the daughter so he was gonna like just jump out of the bushes and take her so there's colonel sanders and his wife claudia and Claudia has a chicken restaurant in the area that I want to go to and it happens to be closed on Mondays and wouldn't you know that I'm passing through here on a Monday but this is them getting married in 1949 because she was actually the person that he hired to run his chicken joint out of the gas station and she was his mistress so Josephine left him and he married Claudia and they stayed together till the end of their lives and there he is franchising the chicken when he franchised it it was franchised as sanders chicken but the guy who was painting one of the franchisees uh billboards put kentucky fried chicken on there and it kind of stuck colonel what the way he would sell it is he would just show up places uh people that he wanted to become a franchisee and he would have all of the stuff already in the car and he would bust out his pressure cooker and his chicken and all the ingredients and he would make it right there for him and prove how good it was 
And there he is with Jerry Lewis, the Jerry Lewis Telethon. Basically became a celebrity after he sold the place. Became the figurehead and the mascot. And gave back a lot. My sister's neighbor, um, she was family friends with him and Claudia and said that he was always giving back. Look at that, that's cool. It's a weather vane. Oh, Scott Michaels. I know, I wish he could have been here. He would have loved this. Oh, if you pick this up, it says, Colonelisms. It's an old phone that says if you pick it up, you can hear um, the Colonel's thoughts on work. Let's see, over here we've got a pressure cooker, because that's how he got started. Some bead art. A vote for Colonel Sanders. One of his ties. And then several of the different KFC pins that he would wear. Places a pure touch of class when you walk in. I mean, that's what greets you is a big giant bucket of chicken that we saw. And he just starts talking to you like a friend. Wow, look at that lamp. It's a lit up bucket of chicken. I love it. These are like milk glasses. That's a really killer clock. Another bust of the Colonel, bronze bust, sculpted by the Colonel's daughter, Margaret. Oh, so Margaret is, his daughter Margaret was named after his mother, right up here, Margaret. They gave him a tongue lashing when he was young about being lazy because he got fired from a job. She said he should be so embarrassed that he would humiliate himself by wasting someone's time that was willing to give him a job. And he just said he never forgot that. And was like a consummate worker for the rest of his life because of that just never ever could quit working. Even when he turned 65 and he was gonna get that social security money, he still, that's when he hit the road to sell franchises. Oh, check this out. Looks like we've got some of their clothing and his office over here. Oh man, even if it's small, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Colonel's suit, Claudia Sanders dress, and he had tons of canes. My friend's, or my sister's neighbor has a couple of his canes and said he would just give them out to people, souvenirs. There's one of them. And he wore the white suit because he was like a clean, cleanliness fanatic. So he would prove that working at KFC and making his chicken, you could remain clean there's a great painting of him no glasses that's a rockwell norman rockwell then as we go over to his desk they have a it looks like a porcelain colonel right over here by his safe his fort knox safe that would keep the secret recipe says, try your hand at unlocking the secret recipe. The KFC secret recipe is a combination of 11 herbs and spices and has resulted in finger licking <laughs> good chicken to people around the world. Despite its use around the world, only a handful of people actually know the ingredients and they've signed strict confidentiality contracts. Uh, that's pretty cool. Look behind him is another picture of his mother. And I haven't been to Japan, but I've heard that KFC is like a Christmas custom. Everybody eats it. There's his desk. That's great. His telephone. He traveled around the country by car. Didn't like to fly, so he was always on the road. Let's see what he's got. KFC stuff. Some of his mail over here. The Lincoln Herald. And then right down here at the very front, there's a plaque. And the plaque says, Colonel Sanders original office furniture. And this must be a painting of he and his mother. 
And this is showing him as the figurehead, the spokesman. In fact, they have him dressed up as Santa. He said in Shelbyville where he lived, because of the way he looked and dressed, everybody thought he was Santa Claus anyway, so he used to give out buckets of chicken for Christmas. <laughs> so here's a golden pressure cooker with his name and everything etched on it. His radio commercials. The Ballad of Colonel Sanders record single. That says the 1975 Kentucky Derby Festival. They're off luncheon. Colonel Harlan Sanders Outstanding Kentuckian Award. And up here some Kentucky candies with his image on it. Whole cream candies it says. For a free museum, this place is just absolutely amazing. You can even walk in the bucket of chicken. Looks like over here it's a lot of photos of him with famous people. Dionne Warwick up here. Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Henry Kissinger. Dick Clark. And the man who painted the picture, of course, Norman Rockwell. That's a good one. And I really like this one, too. Speaking of his celebrity status, there he is with Bob Hope and a guest on Carson. Here they show you the Colonel's commercials. Scott Michaels, I think you just found your next vacation, my friend. <laughs> Have yourself a bucket of chicken. It says one day in 1957, Colonel called his friend Pete Harmon to see if he wanted to buy 500 buckets, paper buckets that another franchise had purchased from a traveling salesman. Harmon bought them and filled each one with 14 pieces of chicken, five rolls, and a pint of gravy with a price of $3.50. The chance to have it a bucket of chicken, they sold 300 of the complete dinners in the first two days. The takeout bucket idea was an instant success, and the quick serve drive through food service industry was launched in the form of a red and white bucket. There's some of his original promotional materials and some of the original packets. I dig the hat. I wish they still gave out the paper hats like that. Over here on the wall, they have a really cool picture of him up there, kind of gazing at a sunset. And then him relaxing out here. And then a handful of awards. Harlan Sanders <laughs> Restaurant of the Year. Looks like a chicken, of course. This one's got his face on it. This one's got the bucket of chicken itself on it. I love it. That is great. <laughs> there he is with the one shaped like a chicken. So that is the scale that the Colonel would use to weigh his herbs and spices he would travel with. Some keys to the city. Kentucky Colonel hat. Basically just a one room little museum. This place packed a punch. This was awesome. I love it. So I guess well, we'll say goodbye to the Colonel now. Colonel Harlan Sanders. I, I know we already met. I'm just I'm just saying goodbye, Colonel. You know, I don't think I can say one bad thing about this place. This was a fantastic experience, especially if you don't have a lot of time. This was so cool. This was a plus. All right, my friends, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. 
We'll see you next time. Have a great night from the great state of Kentucky. Goodbye.